Russell, thanks for being here. So much, so much to talk about. I've heard so much about you. I wanted to meet you, uh, talk to you. Uh, your shirt is so open. Uh, <laughs> not in a bad way. Yes, don't look at it as a sexual advance. It's merely a sartorial coincidence. Ah, OK, all right. <laughs> this is an opening of a shirt, not the opening of a sexual opportunity. Yes, well, <laughs> thanks for telling me. Cause I'm gonna dive right in there. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I gotta ask you, I notice hair mm. for obvious reasons. I got my own thing going on. Uh, your hair is well, quite unusual, and in all the photographs, it looks quite wild and sometimes insane. How do you get your hair to look like that? Well, I might ask you the same question, sir. For both of our haircuts look like a challenge to the gods, didn't they? Like the Tower of Babel building upward yes. as a challenge to God. My hair's held up mostly by willpower. <laughs> willpower? <laughs> Really? I just concentrate and wish it to be so. Oh, well, it's... I applaud you and your work. Conan, Fantastic, did yes. Your, like, cos when I've watched you on my television set, like, that your hair, it seems that it's crept up. Like, did it start off like mine has become a bizarre self-parody? Yes. Initially, I thought, well, well, I'll have hair like this, and then it got out of control, and of an addictive nature. For a while, I was terribly involved in the heroin world. Yes. Similarly, with hairspray, I just more and more and more. Yes. And now what, this. What happens is there's no retreating, you know? Once you <laughs> go with this, where do you, how do you go back, you, you know? Can't. You, you it, can't. It would I can't come out like weakness. Something. Yeah, if I came out like with it flat, it would be not, uh, people would get upset. It looks like you're apologizing. Just keep going upwards, I say. Thank you. All right. If you and I. <laughs> I'm going to, right? I think you're. I'm going... We could build. We could build an arc. We could build an arch of hair across yes. the Atlantic between our two countries. Yes! Uniting <laughs> like that. This is a fantastic idea. Our hair <laughs> touching in the mid-Atlantic. A glorious rainbow. Yes! <laughs> We'd make a mockery of Lindbergh's achievements. <laughs> is that it? <him? laughs> well, that's what I want to accomplish. Yes. Uh, OK, you are a... Uh, uh, you're becoming a big star here. You're a superstar in the United Kingdom. Uh, you're, just, you're one of the hottest stars in that country. How do you handle celebrity? It must be quite intense for you. How do you handle it? Well, I exploit it for my own free will. Oh. <laughs> it's better than my previous occupation, was, which was uh, being what is called in the United Kingdom being on the dull welfare. Having, yes. You've got hardly any money, very little options, lots of time, which tends to lead to excessive onanism, which is bad for the eyesight. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, I, I know, I know. I prefer celebrity to poverty very much, you know, <laughs> given, given the options. Having now had a sample of both... Right. You think... You weighed both carefully. Poverty and anonymity to fame and celebrity. Yes. And, and you've, you're choosing fame. Conan, in conclusion, the sexual opportunities are far greater in yes. celebrity. They are. There's barely any comparison. I, I have not found that to be true. <laughs> have you made a marital commitment to a, a lady? Yes, but even before. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, why dwell on me? Your own uh, career is going so well. You performed for the Queen. Now, in your country, uh, that's just considered the highest honour. What was it like to perform for the Queen? It's a great deal of pressure, Conan, on accounts of the protocols. Before meeting Her Majesty the Queen, a flunky will meet you and say, when you meet Her Majesty the Queen, you will call her mom. You will call her ma'am. See, already I've forgotten. Ma mom as in arm, not ma'am as in jam. You will bow from the head, not from the waist. Don't overbow. Don't curtsy. She won't think it's cute. You must be polite. But when you actually meet her, all them words are ringing in your ears. It's brought terrible pressure. And Part of my mind is always against me. Look at this haircut. That part of my mind. <laughs> that part of my mind, Conan. Whilst I'm trying to think, call her ma'am as in jam, not mama's as in arm. Bow from the head, not from the waist. A little part of me is thinking, grab her boobs. A little part of me. <laughs> it's not a little part of you. It's a big part it's of you. It's my core, it's my essence. You want to do that. Did you... Uh, how did she react to you? I'm imagining... She called the police. <laughs> And good thing they're right there with her at all times. Uh, but what, did she did she like you? Do you think? Do you? She seemed to like me as much as she could could convey with vague murmurs. <laughs> when people are very highly bred in my country, they don't like to move their faces. Oh, well done. Yes, yes. Like that. <laughs> I think if they were to communicate more, all the sexual repression would ooze out. Yes, yes. With being engulfed, <laughs> then I would need our hair bridge to escape. <laughs> 
queen would run across your hair onto my hair and end up in Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I wouldn't wish that on Her Majesty. Now, um... <laughs> Not wrong. Uh, <laughs> you uh, are are famous uh, in your country for for being very funny, but also you had a, an ugly incident with Rod Stewart that yes. played out at an award show. That was unfortunate. And and uh, one. <laughs> And it got everybody in your country talking, and it was real, and it was awkward, and I must ask you about it. What happened? It was an award show, is that right? I made a faux pas. I made a social faux pas. I went to the wall to be acknowledged for my style, obviously. Yes. <laughs> Once there, I met Rod Stewart, and, and he's always been a hero of mine, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. And I, when I approached him, and I said, oh, hello, Rod, it's a great pleasure to meet you. And he said, oh, you want to watch with the womanising, mate? I thought, that's a bit rich coming from him. What's next? Get your hair cut. Yeah. So, I mean, it just seemed right, right. inappropriate. For him to chastise you, for womanizing, it's Rod Stewart, exactly. Right, you were Rod Stewart. You yeah. have conducted yourself in a terribly sexy fashion. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> okay, so. Perhaps George Bush will wish me to be less bellicose. Yes, well, please. <laughs> seems, seems inappropriate <laughs> advice. So, like when, I, like, when I got onto the stage, I mentioned that in passing to the assembled crowd that I'd been given advice that had seemed like glass houses, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. If, like, Who is he to tell me? Precisely, yes. Colin, and this is what I felt inside of myself, and I communicated it verbally. Then, and this is where the mistake began. I, in passing, mentioned that I'd been dating his daughter. I said, oh, Rod gave me some advice earlier. You know, he said, watch with the women and everything. That's a bit rich coming from him. Mind you, I did have a go on his daughter. Oh, my... Now, <laughs> you, you said this in a... This is a, a televised mistake. award show. Yes, it was a terrible um, mistake. Because also, we'd, there had been no sexual congress between his daughter and I. We'd merely been dating as if in Edwardian Britain. I'd held a parasol for her very briefly. <laughs> yeah. That's all I've done. And I don't think you can get pregnant through that. Well, there is a way. But anyway, so what? So, so what? So please, please. Not if you important. open it at the right time. Uh, let's stop. Okay, so you said that, but then the best part is you made that mistake. Yes. Rod Stewart then gets up on stage to get an award, and he... What happened? Well, I was sat eating dinner at the award at the function, just enjoying eating the dinner, and while I was eating the dinner, thinking, oh, this is surreal, Justin Timberlake's over there, all those celebrities, Sasha Baron Cohen, all those famous people, I carry on eating my dinner. Rod Stewart's on the stage receiving his Lifetime Achievement Award. I've already been acknowledged for my style, as you can see. Yes. Eating the food, eating the food. Are you eating taffy? What are you... What is that? <laughs> It was ridiculous. I was spilling most of it. Yes, yeah, I can tell, I can tell. At one point, I poked myself in the eye. It was very fortunate that my fork was imaginary, so I could have lost a digit. <laughs> I continued the eating. Yes. I heard from the stage in the unmistakable voice of Rod Stewart, Russell Brand, stand up. I thought, that kind of really happened. I'll just carry on with my imaginary meal. <laughs> happened again. It happened again. This time more warlike. Yes. More aggressive. Yeah. He goes, stand up. I thought, oh, no, this shouldn't be happening in my life. Then so I had to stand up, because that's not fair, is it? That sort no. of thing happens in nightmares. Then it happened in actual reality. It spilled into reality. Exactly, Conan. yes, yes. We've got boundaries. I thought we had a deal with the world of dreams. We keep away from them, they stay away from us. I stood there, and he, and he started to berate me. You stand here now and tell me you didn't have it off your daughter. So I'm very sorry, Rod Stewart. I'm very sorry I didn't have sex with your daughter. I apologise for inferring that. Right, I apologise. Right. It's very bad manners. And I thought, this is a little bit out of order, you know, here am I there to receive an award for being a very stylish man, only to be berated by a man who, in his prime, wore leopard skin tights on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Russ will be at the Just for Last Festival in Montreal tomorrow through Saturday and uh, at Blender in New York City Sunday and oh, Monday. Yeah. Russell, funniest person I've talked to in a long time. Please come back soon. Thank you. Russell Brand, everybody. Be right back. Eugene Merman.